How you doing, everybody? My name is Doug Ullenbrock. I'm the director of events with FMCA. This is Barb Filer. She is the events manager. We're here to talk a little bit about the um, the, the event we have coming up this July, the uh, Spirit of Wyoming convention in Gillette, Wyoming. Um, we're looking forward to it. We're working our butts off right now to get this all put together. Uh, things are going really well. We're excited about it. Um, got a lot of things to talk about. So if you have questions, go ahead and send them in. We'll start working on those. We have some questions that were uh, emailed to us um, early on uh, the last day. So we'll start with those. As you have questions, go ahead and send them in, as I mentioned. Barb, how are you doing? How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. Great. We're really cranking out the program right now, and things are going just fine. Yeah, we're, we're finishing up a lot of the different um, uh, planning for the event. We are in the process of putting the program together. That's going to go to the, uh, the printer here in about two weeks. So a um, lot of different things going. And starting today, we are sending out confirmation packets. Um, today is the last day of our extended early bird deadline. So if you haven't signed up yet and you want to save 20 bucks, get it done before 11.59 tonight. The price goes up tomorrow. So if you haven't signed up yet and you're going to, get it done today. Um, as I mentioned, we're sending out the uh, confirmation packets now. Um, do you want to talk about that? We want to talk about what we're, what we're doing here. We want to answer questions first. What do we do? Let's let's review the uh, the packet a little bit. All right. Okay. All right. Well, hold on a sec. Something just happened oh. here. I don't even know what the heck happened. All right. Now we're back on. Okay. All right. So today the girls are up. We're running uh, by hand. We do all these. The envelope will, that will be coming your way will look just kind of like this. Okay, the, your address label will be there. This is a will call packet, so the label's up here. Okay. Um, first thing you're going to see in your packet is the confirmation guide. Doug loves writing this thing. This has all everything you want to know about getting to the grounds and getting prepared to be on the grounds. Yeah, we have the directions in there, and, and I really uh, I ask everybody please follow the directions that are in this book don't follow the directions that you're going to get from uh your ways or your your gps systems or anything else like that um use these directions you can get all the way to the event with your stuff but once you get close once you get on close to the site use our directions to get yourself in it tells you exactly where you need to go depending on what your uh, parking preference is what you what you sign up as far as you know, whether you had 30 amp full hookup, whether you had 30 amp water, general parking, whatever, follow these directions. Please do that. If you do it, you'll get to where you need to go right away. If you don't, you'll end up driving around and we'll have to come chase you down and pull you in and you'll be I'll aggravated. We'll be aggravated. Um, so just go ahead and follow these directions and it solves a lot of, uh, a lot of problems, both for you and for our parking team. Also in this book, uh, are just a brief overview of some of the activities going on. One of the main ones is the Supersized Book Club, FFCA Supervised, Supervised. It will be, super, it will be supervised. <laughs> They'll also be supersized. Supersized and vised. But anyway, that's on Saturday at one o'clock. The book um, is available at barnesandnoble.com um, and uh, it's Thread to the West. It's great. Cowboy, he'll be there to uh, talk about it and sign your book. So get started on this. We do like you to pre-sign up for this just so we know uh, the number of people coming. Thank you. And there's a login for that. What else? We got the Magic Mile. Don't you want to talk about the, did you, did you talk about the fella? Did you talk about, you know, what the name of the book is and the whole thing? Oh, well. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to talk about the book, talk about the book. All right. So this is, this guy is awesome. He's, he's coming from Douglas, Wyoming, local guy. And he's written a series of these books, and they're all about um, the immigration coming over to America and then how they settled the West. There's several characters. The first, this book will introduce you to all the characters in their lives. I hear it's pretty good. It's kind of some intense moments, so be ready. But um, his name is Reed Lance Rosen Rosenthal, and we're going to read book one of Threads West and American Saga. All right. Is that it? Well, thank you very much. Oh, you're, you're very welcome. Now we're going to do it. You sound like Elvis. Thank you very much. Okay, and then we're going to do the next thing is uh, Magic Mile. 
which you can sign up for this on your registration this time. We're going to have this all, this is very well organized this time. <laughs> and we have a great charity who will benefit from this, um, Youth Emergency Services of uh, right. Gillette. We always like to leave a nice footprint when we leave our, our uh, locations. So check into that and start training. And what else do we have here, Doug? We have our whiskers games for those who uh, can grow, uh, grow facial hair, unlike me. Um, <laughs> If you can, you know, get a beard, a goatee, mustache, we have this contest, uh, you know, put your face together, come compete against the other fellows who have uh, facial hair, and we will have a Mr. Whiskers champion uh, crown before we leave uh, Gillette. We also have our chapter fair. We ha when we were in Perry, we had to cancel the chapter fair, unfortunately, because of COVID restrictions. Um, we are going to have it here in, in, in Gillette, so um, go ahead and sign up. Um, if you, if you're a chapter, sign up to get a booth, uh, chapters at fmca.com can get you the penny and, and Danielle, they'll get you registered for a booth. If you're a first timer, or if you're just looking for a chapter to join, you come on, you know, on that Tuesday afternoon, 345, I believe is the time. Um, it's right after first timers orientation at three. So 345 chapter fair will happen. Um, talk to the folks there in the different chapters in the, in the various areas. Um, find out what they do, find out what they're up to. Um, you might find some chapters uh, that, that fit, fit what you do, uh, who you get along with, and you can sign up there. They'll be happy to talk to you all about the things they do. Uh, what else do we have in there? On the back of this, this packet are some local information, just in case you're looking for, you need to hook drug stores or radio stations, TV stations. So keep it, this book, this, when you get this packet, just dump it out and read everything, and you'll be golden. Yeah, take a look at that book. I mean, there's a lot of different information in there. There's kind of some of the rules, uh, a lot of the information about arriving, um, information about mail, uh, kind of anything that you need to know ahead of time will be in this booklet. Now, there obviously, it's not everything that, that you want to know. There are some other things. We do have a website, um, our information central, you can go to that. And we have a lot of information on that, and we'll be updating that as we get closer about all the different things that you might need to know um, before you arrive and while you are on the grounds. Uh, closer to the event, we will have our program, a digital edition of that, that we'll send out um, to everyone. Um, so you can look at the digital edition of the program. We'll have our event app. We'll have texting service. So um, the information that you'll be getting, we'll be starting, you know, probably about a month ahead of time. We're going to just start throwing a lot of stuff at you, and, um, you know, you, you can choose to look at it if you wish. Um, I do really, really, really ask that you look at this information that comes in this confirmation packet. Make sure that, you know, we haven't gotten to some of the things yet, but make sure you look at this book. Open this packet up and look at this book if you do nothing else. All right, what else we got? It's in that packet. Well, um, first thing we're, we're going oh, to arrival date. Okay. So first thing you want to look at when you get this is that this, this document is correct. This is your the parking you selected, whether it be 50 amp full, 30 amp water, uh, uh, generator, 24 hour generator, all these placards should uh, relate to exactly what you ordered. If it doesn't, get a hold of us and we'll get it worked out. You also have this state of entry card. Um, and then it also tells you on the back how to put all this stuff in so they can see it right. But this is important too. If this is not what you ordered or you didn't know or it's going to, we need to change it. Let us know. If you have the date of the 5th, but you can't come into the 6th because your travel messes you up, don't worry about that. Um, we, you know, that's not the problem. It's just if you have the date of the 5th and you want to come in on the 3rd, that becomes an issue. Right. And let us know if, if, if you need to change your date for one reason or another, please let us know. Now, I've already gotten a couple questions and we got one from uh from john and jill kendall um it's their first event their first timers and they were looking to come in on july 3rd um asked what are the procedures to arrive that early um we're not encouraging folks to come in on july 3rd because we're still setting things up that early um, we'll have some volunteers in there we'll have our advanced crews getting signage out doing a lot of different things that we have to do to prepare but if you do have to come in the third for some reason, your travel schedule is all jacked up and you have to come in on the third, go to the will call, follow, follow the, uh, the instructions to will call. You have the option to either park dry for free 
until it's time for you to part, until it's time your arrival date comes up, or you can pay an additional $30 to park early um, per night. So, you know, like I said, I'm not encouraging it, but I understand that there are folks who have problems. I've talked to a number of people on the phone who are having a hard time finding a camping spot, a place to park um, during that weekend since it is the 4th of July. I get it. Um, we can't handle a ton of people, but you know, if you're finding that you can't, there's no other option, come on in and we'll figure out how you can park either, you know, dry camp for free or get parked and pay the extra 30 bucks. Um, I, you know, I feel, I feel bad about this situation for a lot of people. Um, there's a lot of crazy stuff going on that weekend and, and other things as well. So, um, I get it. Um, so next up is your, your bad these badges make sure they're how you want them to be um I, don't, I mean i'm not sure sometimes you have a nickname or something if you prefer but basically there it should be right and then these badges you wear the entire time these these are what we all everybody's looking for are these badges so you don't want to have these and leave them on your table at home you want to get them in your rv put them in badge holders if you own some We'll have these plastic ones on site if you need to have batch holders. We also say first timers, we send the plastic yeah, ones out to. Um, most of the folks, if you're, if you're not a first timer, we're not going to send the plastic ones to you, but you can pick some up at the info desk if you need one. Um, most of, What we find is most people after the first one, they go and get some kind of batch holder uh, to wear around their neck. So uh, we just don't, we only even send the plastic ones out anymore. Consider that badge your ticket to everything we do on the ground. So that's why we ask you, please bring it. If you don't, people are going to question you, where's your where's your badge at when you're trying to get into seminars, when you're trying to get into different, different activities. So I encourage you to make sure you bring your badge with you all the time. Um, we are understanding if you forget your badge, we may go back to ask you, you know, go go ask you to go get another one. We may ask you to go over to info and talk to them and they can supply you one. Um, but, you know, it is important that you have the badge. Um, for first timers, bars putting together a, some first timer uh, ribbons. Um, you're going to get a, a red ribbon. You can stick that. You can attach that to the back of these plastic ones. Do not attach this ribbon to anything that's fabric. It will not hold and you'll lose it in like two minutes. I would suggest if you if you have the other kind of batch holders is to tuck it inside with, with your any kind of ribbon. Volunteers also just tuck it inside your batch holder. The first time is you can do this if you have the plastic. Also, first timers, you're going to get a little guide. This is a little few extra steps, a little more information to read to help you uh, get through the various mirage of things you're going to go through at the convention. Just some tips and tricks and ideas. And on the back, we even put some recommended because um, you're going to be overwhelmed with seminars and all kinds of things. Just some recommended seminars to get started with. Um, there's mentors. You're going to learn about the mentoring program. It, We've got people with big buttons on that are there to help you. And you'll learn all that in your first timer orientation at 3 o'clock on Tuesday. We're asking you to arrive on the 5th. If you can't, don't panic. Um, just get in on the 6th and know you have something by 3 o'clock. If you miss that orientation, again, don't panic. The mentors are there. We're all there to help you. Yeah, one of the things that we do for first timers, and actually for anybody who is not familiar with the, um, the Camplex grounds or any of the grounds we go to, we have what's called a walkabout um, on that Tuesday or the day before the start of the convention, um, from, usually from 11 till 3, where uh, some of our mentors will take groups of people out and just walk you around to the different places where you'll be, you know, where the seminar rooms are, where the entertainment is, where the info center is, where the exhibits are. It just kind of gets you familiar with the grounds um, and tell you kind of point that here's here's what this is, here's what this is, here's what this is. And, you know, it, it makes for a nice little educational session make you feel a bit more comfortable so that when you get you know going on wednesday morning wednesday afternoon you're not in a panic trying to figure out where you need to go you'll have a, a good idea already of where you need to go um it'll start from where the um we're going to start the walkabouts from the tram transfer station so if you're coming in on the trams um you'll be dropped off there and you can pick up a group right there so it'd be very easy for you to find uh find some folks to take you around You'll just walk around. If you have mobility issues, you can bring your mobility uh, um, device, uh, whether it's cart or whatever it is. We also will have some um, six passenger golf carts available to take those who don't have that and do need some help getting around. Yeah. 
And then for stars, this is for your windows so the parkers go easy on you. <laughs> sure put that in here. Um, also in there is our wonderful volunteers. Of course, you're going to get your, your V tag for your window and then a, a special letter about your meetings and your uh, what's going on with the volunteering. You're probably used to that. Um, you'll get all your ribbon and everything at your meetings. If you order the ladies luncheon, your ticket will look like this. I recommend if you get this, put that right into your uh, badge holder that, that you either own or when you get this one and just so you don't lose that. There's a tow car hanger for your car. If you bring a tow, that keeps you connected to things and gets you in and out of the grounds if you go. It's also for your towing vehicle. Oh, if, say, oh. if, you have a, if you have a travel trailer or a fifth wheel, put that in your truck so you can get in and out of the grounds without any problems. And then we also have a little thank you gift for you. Per, per person. Well, what are those thank you gifts? They're bonus box. So you can go spend this at the vendor hall. Yeah, five, everybody gets five dollars to start off with. Um, whatever you purchase at the at the exhibits, they'll take those. Everybody every exhibitor will take them um, to go towards whatever your purchase is. They won't give you change for it. So if you buy something for two bucks and use that, you're not gonna get any change. But you know, buy something for ten bucks, it's gonna be five for you. Um, we had a question about the packets from uh, Dee Dee's, and uh, she asked whether um, she she asked to have her materials kept at roll call. Now she wants them mailed instead. Um, just give us a call, send us an email, say you want to change, and we'll make sure that that's taken care of for you. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Uh, Barb's writing it down right now. So she'll get you taken care of right after this. And you know what? You don't even need to. Timothy Day asked, um, is there going to be evening entertainment? And the answer to that is, of course, there's going to be evening entertainment. Um, on Wednesday evening, we're going to have, I'm sorry, on Thursday evening, we're going to have Jim Pelly. He is, um, he's actually an FMCA member. Um, he has written for, uh, for Saturday Night Live. Um, he's a humorist. Um, he comes up with uh, very interesting um, takes on different situations. Some of those are RV related, uh, so I think you'll really enjoy him. Some of you may have already seen Jim before. Um, he'll also serve as our MC during the rest of the event once he's completed uh, his act on that Thursday night. Friday night we have Three Dog Night. Um, a lot of you folks probably remember Three Dog Night from you know years ago. Um, they've had you know they had a string of of hits you know that everybody recognizes. And then on uh, Saturday night. Uh, we have a group called Narrow Gauge. They're a country and rock uh, cover band from out of Denver area, Colorado Springs area. They're coming up. They're going to be, uh, you know, I, I checked them out. They're going to be really good. You're going to love them. If you like the dance, you're going to want to come to that. You'd have a good time that night to, to wrap things up on this convention. We also will have entertainment interspersed throughout the, uh, throughout the other parts of the event during the daytime. Um, on Tuesday evening, we have some things going on. We have movie, movie night. We have a, uh, card bingo night. Um, so there'll be plenty of things to do. We have karaoke. So there'll be all kinds of stuff for you to do. If, you, if you're looking for something, we'll have something for you. What next? Quick, can anyone name a Three Dog Night song? Somewhere Bring it up there. Enjoy the win a prize. Oh. <laughs> you have prizes to give out? Well, Where, what kind of prizes do you have? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Quick, first one, give me a Three Dog Night song. Okay. Hey, uh, yes, we are we? arriving on 5th. Are there any other activities planned? Um, let me just flip it. Or available for the 6th other than orientation walkabout you mentioned? Yeah, on the evening of the 6th, we will have uh, um, a band on the plaza area uh, named the Unknown Known. Um, they're kind of a funky band. Um, and then in at the uh, at Central Pavilion receptions area, we will have card bingo that evening. Oh, somebody, Ooh, Facebook user, oh, you don't know your user. name. <laughs> Facebook, says Facebook user. They have to allow to give permission to play there. And now you have to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> At karaoke night. <laughs> All right. Um, Mike McIntyre. Oh. What else we got? What else we got there on the, uh, we have other things that we've talked about, talked about there? Uh, your collection of things? Well, what I was thinking was, they always ask me about program. Where's the program? program? And right. I know it'll be digital, but I want them to see one so they know it's not just a simple, like, you know, 
So I brought a one from Perry, but this is the big program that you're going to get when you get on the grounds. And um, I can guarantee you that by the time this hits your hands, there'll be changes. So although, the, you know, it's, this is great, a great thing to have, but also there'll be a change sheet that will go with this, and then the app will be updating. So just try to uh, go. <laughs> you're going to be so much information, but this goes to print very soon and they'll you know somebody might cancel or change we might even add stuff to it so you got to sort of you know look beyond this book but this book is full of everything highly would recommend that you read the ground services section when you get this um it'll also be up digitally and uh, a lot of stuff will be ahead of it but that's the main thing of this book and it's pretty impressive and a lot of this information is also on our information central page that you can look at beforehand um uh, did you mention that that we also with that comes two maps, two okay, fold out maps with a lot of information. Uh, it's a map of the grounds, and then on the back is the, uh, the full schedule event, so you can carry that around with you as well. Um, I really, I highly recommend. I've been telling people this for the last couple of years. Use the app. It will. It, it is. It is that book in your phone, um, plus more, plus a heck of a lot more. So you know, go ahead and download that to your phone. We'll send the information out about a month ahead of time, maybe a little bit less than that, maybe about two, three weeks. Put that on your phone. Everything will be on your phone. You won't ever have to worry about carrying that book around. Now, you like to have that book maybe to sit around and look at while you're sitting in your RV or out, you know, while you're sitting uh, under the awning. Um, but, you know, having that having that app on your phone, you'll, you'll have the book with you everywhere you go. Okay, just for the record, we've got Mama Told Me, uh, well, Mama told me not to come would be the winner, but we don't know his name. One Man Band, Eli's Coming. Hide your heart, girl. Okay. <laughs> you will all be expected at karaoke night. A blast in these songs. Okay. Oh, do you want me to sing anything? <laughs> you want me to sing? Oh, my gosh. I don't know if you want that. We'll see. We'll see. All right. I just um, want to hear Doug sing. <laughs> You're supposed to sing. Well, we'll see about okay. that. Okay. Um, um, can't wait to get to convention. Let the fun begin. <laughs> yeah, we are going to have fun. It is going to be a good show. And, and, you know, we went to Perry, and that was kind of a – it was a really good show. I think I think people had a great time, but we were still kind of under some COVID restrictions there that didn't allow us to do um, all the things that we normally do. Um, we are going to be closer to away from COVID. I cannot tell you right now where we're going to be on that. And I know um, – Carrie, Carrie Layden asked, what COVID precautions have we taken and how will they be enforced? Um, I'm going to tell you right now, we have not established any COVID restrictions or anything right now. We are going to go by what the state of Wyoming, what their public health orders tell us we have to do. Now, we're going to be working with their health department. We're going to be working with different people uh, in the area. It's Campbell County, the state of Wyoming, um, to see whatever we can do to make sure we are both safe, but as covid restriction free as we can do at the show there's only a certain amount of stuff we can do if the state says you have to do this i can't go against that we can't you know put the show against that and put you know me and other people in jeopardy um but i don't want to set any restrictions now because we don't know what it's going to look like in july so we've got a number of ways that we can get con information out to you whether it's email the app um, information in your welcome bag when you show up, um, the texting service. So we will let folks know where we stand with the different COVID restrictions or precautions or whatever we're going to do as we get closer to the event. Um, you know, I'm hoping, it's my hope, and I hear a lot of good things coming out about, you know, loosening restrictions and maybe, you know, removing mask uh, precautions, all that. I hope that's the case. I know right now, Wyoming, they do not require any masks outdoors at all. So we won't have to worry about that. But there are some indoor things that they still have on the books there that, you know, we're hoping go away, but I can't guarantee anything. So that's why we're not going to make any kind of uh, proclamations at this point saying what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to wait until we have a little bit more time to get closer to the event, see what the state of Wyoming has, you know, going for them. Um, I'm very hopeful. Let me just leave it at that. Um, Can I ask one of these questions? Would you like to ask? What kind of question would you like to ask? Yeah, it's, like, it's always my favorite question. Go down in there. Oh, oh okay. Who are these questions from down here? Uh, no, I was thinking I want to talk about that. Well, we're, we're going to talk about that in there. You told me that. 
I did tell you that in our pre-production meeting, remember? Oh, yeah, pre-production. <laughs> We're so official. All right, so which one would you like me to do? Ooh. Any of Who's it from? Well, it, this one is from a phone number. No, it's not from a phone number. It's from this person down here. Oh, are we doing that right now? No. Doug. I'm going to leave. All right. This is from Mike McIntyre. Oh, okay. And Mike, just so you know, everybody, it's Mike's birthday. I have good, good authority that it is his birthday. So, Mike, Sorry. we're going to sing happy birthday to you. So, Glenda, Sorry. you're ready. You're going, to, you're going to get to hear me sing. Sorry, Mike. Are you ready? Yep. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mike. Happy birthday to you and many more. Down on the farm, they all asked for Mike. The horses asked, the cows asked, they all asked for Mike. There. <laughs> all right. And that was the last okay, time you want to hear me sing on this thing. That's it. That's our only request. All right. Mike asked, in the event we may have a mechanical breakdown that would postpone our arrival to another day, would it be helpful to contact you? If so, who do I contact? Um, yes, it would be helpful because if you do, then we'll be able to tell you uh, what kind of what you need to do as far as getting there. Whether we need to cancel you, um, you know how to how to you know go about when you do come in, how to let us know you're there, that kind of thing. What happens is the parking team will stop parking about Wednesday at noon. Now, they'll have people who, skeleton crew, who will take care of those who arrive late, but we need to know you're there. We can't just let you sit there. So what you want to do is you want to call the phone number, and I'm going to give it to you right here. It's 513-909-1701, and that is the phone number to our uh, information desk. That will get you someone who will be able to give you information. When you arrive, that's the same number you would call to get parked. And we'll have a sign out in the holding area, arrival area, that if you do show up later, this is the number you call, and that'll get somebody from the parking team up to get you parked. So, how's that answer that question? That was good. Okay. That was really good. Let's see if you can do as good. <laughs> Has the list of uh, vendors been put up on the uh, I believe so. I believe if you go to, uh, go to the website um, and go to the events section, um, the, 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 the drop-down menu, you can go and find the exhibitors who are signed up. Tina uh, Henry, who does, is our um, coordinator, our exhibit coordinator, she will take, she's taking care of that. She's got everything out there. So I believe you can go in and check that out right now. We need to, <laughs> Glenda, we need to uh, dress up Western style contest. You're in charge. Glenda's in charge. <laughs> she just volunteered to do that contest. Everybody saw it, right? You guys saw it? You saw it? I saw it. Yep. All right, Glenda, I'll be in touch to see how you're going to put this thing together. <laughs> Thank you for offering. <laughs> oh, we got a nice Bob. Let's hold. And then uh, Mike just said, oh, my God, thank you for his birthday uh, song. Larry, yes, it is the info desk number you gave in the confirmation guide. It is. So you can find that number uh, in your information guide. So you don't need to write it down. But I want to make sure that, you know, we got it out there just in case folks are writing it down. And one thing I also want to talk about, that confirmation guide and that, that, that booklet that, we, that we're going to send out to everybody. If you have, if, if you, if you've, uh, if you've decided to keep your, um, your uh, booklet, your or your confirmation uh, packet, and we'll call and pick it up when you show up. We are going to send you prior to, prior to, you know, um, you know, maybe two weeks out, a month out. I can't remember exactly where where it falls in the schedule. We will send you everything that goes in that packet as a PDF, aside from your badges and your parking card. So you'll get. We'll tell you when you're supposed to arrive. We'll tell you, we'll give you, a, you'll have a PDF of this that you can look at. You'll have a PDF of that you can look at. Um, we also have all this stuff that will be on the website if you need to just go to that. So, you know, we're not going to leave you high and dry. There will be information out there for you as well, even though you're going to be in your stuff that we'll call to pick up, you know, when you arrive. So, you know, I, I don't want folks to know that, think that, you know, they're not going to get anything. Um, Mark said, what are the parking hours? Our parking team works from approximately 8 o'clock till 5 o'clock. They will usually go a little bit after five, but they don't want to be going till after six o'clock, you know, with people still arriving. Um, they work long hours. They work, work many days parking folks. So um, we recommend that everybody be there by about four so you can be parked by five and those guys can get out. 
um, and enjoy some of their day as well. Um, Glenda has gay as her partner. All right, guys, uh, guys in charge. It's a good team. We'll be in touch and we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we can uh, put together for that. Are RV parking sites assigned pre-arrival or does the crew park RVs as as needed as, arri as they arrive, I guess? Yeah, what will happen is when you when you'll follow your directions uh, according to you know what what type of parking, as I mentioned earlier, that are in the book. Um, you'll arrive, uh, the parking team will give you directions into your area, they'll take you to your spot and they'll help you get parked. Um, we do not have assigned spots, so you will arrive. You'll be picked up by a parking team member. You'll be um, either pointed down a road or you'll be grabbed by somebody who will take you to your spot and then you'll get parked. They do a great job of it. We had a terrific parking team. They did an awesome job in Perry. And I think they even have a larger crew coming here um, to Gillette. So um, I, I have no doubt they'll do a fine job. We'll get you parked and we'll get you in and, and settled in uh, in no time. We're registered for a travel trailer with electric. Roughly how deep are these sites? Uh, most sites, most of the sites are 40 foot, give or take, depending on the layout. Um, we won't have any problem parking you, no matter how big or how small you are, we will have a site that you fit into. Um, typically what we do is we have 45, 40 to 45 foot long sites, and then a 20 to 30 foot road between the site across, across from you. So there's typically plenty of room for you to park your RV and then park your tow vehicle in front of your in front of your RV without uh, impacting traffic. That makes sense. It does make sense. Okay. Sometimes you do make sense, Doug. On occasion, I have, I have my good days. You do. You do. On the first Q and A session, you mentioned Paintbrush Services will be handling black water pump outs. Given our experience, four to five days is about the time we need to empty holding tanks. With the number of RVs attending. Is this service expected to be overwhelmed by the fourth day? Uh, no. The, the folks that do this, they're very experienced at this. And um, you have to consider that more than half of our registrants are, um, are on full hookup. So they will not need that service. Um, and, you know, there'll be a number of people who might not need it at all. They might go to the dump station before they leave and they're be good. So you shouldn't have any problem. What you'll do is when you when you need a pump out or you can do it even beforehand, whatever, you'll go to the info center and you'll see the septic service folks from Paintbrush. They will sell you uh, a card for $25 and they will find out where you parked at and they'll schedule you um, to come and get you dumped that day. You'll go back to your RV, you'll put that card, you'll tape it to your window or the side of your RV or just somewhere that they can see it from the street. Because what they'll do is they'll know where you're at, they won't know exactly where you're at. So they'll drive around and although you may see numbers on your posts that you're gonna park up to, it's not gonna be, it's gonna be very difficult for anybody else to see those because you're gonna be blocking them with your RV. So you'll pull up, they'll pull up, they'll look for your card, they'll get your card, they'll hook up to your, uh, to your dump, they'll get you taken care of, they'll take the card and go. Um, also is asked, do I have to be there? It's helpful if you are, but you don't have to be there. I would recommend that you make sure that your RV is prepared for the dump. It means you don't have any valves, you have a valve open so it doesn't suction your, your tank um, when they try to get it out. So make sure you're, you're, if you're not gonna be there, make sure your RV is prepared for when they try to do the dump. Um, did I say how much it was? It's $25. Um, the info, they'll be open starting Tuesday, uh, morning, I believe, um, to start taking orders. Um, so you just go in, get in line. Usually the first couple of days, there's a big long line because everybody wants to go get it. Um, but they take care of the business really quick. They have a couple, uh, couple three or four um, trucks running around, take care, of, take care of the dumps, and they get it done. Same with water. If you need water for some reason, if you don't have water um, and you need to get a fill up of water, there's $25 as well. Um, buy the card and they'll come around and take care of you. And they, it's just how's, how's it collected? They collect the money. It's not a, a FMCA collection thing. And also keep your card on the outside of your rig. If you put it on the inside, they won't stop. They'll, they'll think you don't need it. So you got to put it on the outside so they can take it with them. Right. Oh, we got a, a big, uh, can't believe you remembered Mike's birthday. <laughs> you wouldn't believe the things I remember. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> Be and careful. the things I forgot. 
other. It's the other thing. Um, okay. After so okay, we got all this pump out all good. On Sunday of departure, with the immense number of campers leaving, should we expect traffic delay exiting the camp the campground, which uh, may affect arrival time at the next destination? <laughs> and it's funny because we always get this question at the first timers um, event, and it, it is the most amazing thing you will ever see. It takes us five or six days to get everybody in the dang thing, and everybody just disappears on that Sunday morning. It, it, it is fascinating um, that, you know, we don't have any problems. There's never, I've never seen any kind of traffic back up, tie up, problem on the highway, nothing. Um, everybody just kind of disappears. It is absolutely fascinating. And what's fun is I usually go over there very early in the morning when there's still a whole lot of people there. And I'll go in because I have some work to do. Um, to start, you know, pulling things together and cleaning up and getting ourselves ready to go, um, get off the get off the grounds, and I'll get over there early and everybody still be there, and I'll come back about noon and the place is empty. It's just really, it's really kind of almost eerie. It is. <laughs> it's sad. I mean, for me, I I get there before anybody's there, and I see the whole thing build up, and then I see it all go away. So you know, I get there when it's empty, and I leave when it's empty, and you know, most folks. I think I'm one of the few people that get to experience that. And it's just kind of a weird um, sensation when you see see it build and then go away. But if your plans change on Sunday, Sunday's the day you leave, not Saturday, Sunday, um, and you need to extend your stay, uh, just work with a Camplex. They're all prepared to have you guys. Um, I, I believe it was a call. But um, anyway, it's in. we have information about it's, it's called staying longer. So you'll you'll have a process to do that. You might have to move. You might even be able to stay where you are for a little bit till right. they say. But. Yeah, talk to the folks at Camplex. They're real uh, flexible about what you're gonna be able to do. I think of, up until the 14th, you can probably stay where you are um, unless you are parked at a, a general site and you wanna move to some place that has electric or, or water or, or, or sewer. Um, but they'll work with you. Um, we, do, we, do have, we do have information that'll be um, on the website, it will also be in the uh, in the program. I don't believe it's in the confirmation packet, but we will have that information. If you if you need to, uh, we can get that out to you. Just let us know. But I, it, I know right now it is uh, it is on the website, so you can look and, and, and check that out. Um, you did talk a little bit about COVID, um, but one thing I want to say is to look at over here to our little dude. Yeah, uh, Barb and I got our shots uh, a little while ago. I think right before uh, the last time we did did one of these. Um, Sparky got his shot. He's looking a little deflated now, but he did get his shot. Um, so you know, before long he'll be back up. He'll, he'll be back up to, um, to full. You know, he'll be he'll be filled up again. Still a little blue. Yeah, um, I recommend everybody. You know, I. I certainly, we're not going to make people get their shots, but if, if you get your shot, um, you'll feel a lot more comfortable when you're there. Um, I, different people are in different places. I think most folks who, who are interested in getting their shot probably have gotten it by now. Um, so, you know, it, it, you know, if you want to feel, you know, make sure you're comfortable there, get your shot. I recommend it, you know, but it, we're not going to require anybody. So if you, if you didn't, you didn't. Um, that is what it is. I, I highly recommend it. So we did cover we can stay past Sunday, Facebook user. So you, you understand that? Okay. And then one? Cornhole. Yes. It? yes. Yes. We will have Cornhole on Thursday at 10, 10. o'clock. Uh, make you sure you sign up uh, by Wednesday afternoon at 5 at the Info Center. Um, come on over there uh, Thursday morning. They'll get you all hooked up either with your partner or they'll hook you up with another partner if you don't have one. Um, they'll be out at, at the plaza area um, in the big grass field right by the, uh, the FMCA town center tent. Um, so just come on up there and, and they'll get you all taken care of. Carol Primus Burgers in charge of that. Um, the funny games now. So I'm sure she'll do a fine job and get that thing going and we'll have a good time. We're also going to have, uh, we did it in, in Minot and we're going to do it again. We're going to have a um, water balloon toss um, for folks who want to do that. Um, I want to be part of that, and I want you to be my uh, my partner. We do that, yeah. We'll All do right, that. Yeah. we'll do that. Um, so we'll have that. We got all, all kinds of fun things. We got uh, 
We've got um, some trivia games that'll be going on Thursday, Friday, Saturday afternoons. Um, uh, you know, we have ice cream social, ladies' luncheon, uh, coffee and donuts every morning. Um, so, you know, we're going to have a big time um, doing all this. And I, I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, Perry was fun. Perry was good. Perry was a lot of work just because of all the different things we had to do. Um, we still have some different things here, but it's more and more like, you know, the, the conventions we had done in the past. And, you know, I'm, I'm very excited about the whole thing. And um, I'm looking forward to getting up there. I'm, I'm going to be up there about a month and a half. So um, it's, it's coming quick. You're going to love the, the venue and the, and the buildings. We're so spoiled there with, the, with our nice uh, classrooms, so to speak, seminar rooms. In the Wyoming, um, yeah, really nice. We have at Camplex, they have really three buildings that we're going to use. Um, it's four, but the two are connected. We have the Wyoming Center, which is where the exhibits will be. Info Center will be. We'll have a bunch of seminar rooms in there. Um, and, you know, it's a nice, beautiful, big building with lots of, you know, lots of amenity kind of things going on there. Um, they just redid Energy Hall and the Heritage Center. Um, Heritage Center has a nice theater in it where that's where our governing board and seminars will be. Energy Hall, pardon me, will have, uh, how many how many seminar rooms you got in there? Five or six or seven? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, beautiful new place. Uh, it's not a new place. It's just redone to look new. It is fab it's fantastic. Um, so I think folks will really appreciate, um, especially if you've been there before, you'll really appreciate the upgrades they made to the complex. Um, and if you're new to it, I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. So what's great about that is everything's kind of right together. Um, you know, you don't have to go very far to where your, you know, where your next activity is. You know, the, the plaza is just north of um, the Wyoming Center and south of Central Pavilion, which is the venue we will use for our entertainment, evening entertainment and for our receptions are going to be up in that area. So Everything is really kind of in a nice little triangle. Um, be very easy to get around, very easy for folks to get to. I think we've answered that. Except yeah, you're a everything. cornhole. I'm a cornhole. Yeah, I think what the heck is that? Yeah, I think you're straight up. <laughs> what the heck? Oh, my cornhole. <laughs> Any more questions or something we need to cover? Or? Uh, I don't know. If you guys have any more questions, go ahead and, and send them send them our way. You know, we're at we're at forty two minutes in, and we can't leave until you know four o'clock. So you might have to hear Barb sing again, <laughs> and maybe we'll do a little dance or something. I don't know. We to talk about how you know it's kind of a lax there, more for beverages consumption, a little different. Uh, yeah, we, we said this before. Yeah, one of the things that that is different at Camplex than really any other facility that we go to is they do not have um, any open container laws. So if you choose to um, to drink a little, it's you know we, they don't have we're not going to have any sales there, but you can bring your own. If you do drink, please do so responsibly. Um, I don't want to have to get Sonny Gillespie and his uh, folks with security after you. Um, so you know. Uh, it is different than most places we go. Most places have very strict uh, rules about alcohol. They do not have that at Camplex. Um, so, you know, if you do, if you want to come to entertainment and bring a cooler, you can certainly do that. Um, I equated, I've gone to a lot of NASCAR races. I equated to kind of going to a NASCAR race if you want to do that. Um, so, you know, we certainly are not encouraging folks to, um, to turn it into a, you know, barroom bra saloon kind of thing. But, you know, if, if you do like to, to have a drink, you can certainly do that at this place. Um, FMCA, we are not having concessions do it. So it's on you if you would like. It. So like if they want to bring it to karaoke night. They could. They absolutely could. So when you're singing, they could really stand it better if they brought some. They would definitely need it. Okay. All right. Yes. Just check. Okay. okay. Um, somebody said, when were the packets? Are they getting mailed? Well, we, you know, we, we actually started, we started them this morning. Um, we were supposed to get pictures of them, but that fell apart. Um, but we did get, I, I know I saw them out there and they did get some out today. Um, we will be doing it um, the next few days to get everything out. We had about 1,200 folks register um, up to this point. So we'll be getting those packets out in the next couple of days. 
Um, and hopefully everybody will receive them within the next couple of weeks. If you do not get your packet, please, 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 please let us know so we can get it out to you or tell you that you asked for it to be held at will call. A lot of folks, they don't get their packet and they get all wound up about it. And then we come to find out that they asked for it to be held. And they're usually good with that. They're like, oh, okay, that's great too. But you know, if, if, if you are expecting it and it doesn't arrive, um, please let us know so we can get it taken care of before you start taking off and coming up, coming uh, towards uh, Gillette. Um, he wants to know, can we check in early, which you sort of had a review of that. But just the main thing, once you go there, we're not parking anyone on the 4th, just so you know. But early can be... I, yeah, I don't know what you mean by early. Um, we absolutely are not having anyone come in before the 3rd unless you are an advanced crew member. Um, I, I'm not encouraging or recommending folks come in the third, but if you have to, if you have no other option, um, you can come in, you can stay in the holding area uh, and park for free, dry camp, or you can be parked um, and, and pay the $30 early arrival fee. Um, we really don't have a check-in process. Your check-in process is you show up um, and you come through and get your welcome bag. And then what, what, you, what we'll have in the welcome bag is a little card that's our locator link. Um, I don't think Barb has. Don't we don't have one of those. That. We'll show that at the next one. At the next uh, next one of these we do. And when did you say it was? The thirteenth um, of June, something like that. Um, so what what you'll do is you'll get this little card. It's got a link on it. You'll type that. You'll type that link into your um, into your uh, into your web browser. You'll answer a couple questions. They'll tell you exactly. Tell us where you are parked on the ground. So if we need to get in touch with you. For emergency, or maybe you're at maybe you're at a, at a seminar and something's happening at your uh, RV that you need to know about. We can get in touch with you. Um, it worked really well in Perry. We didn't get quite the um, uh, participation that I would like. It's really an easy process. Um, we used to do locator cards, which you would fill out and then hand, and we'd have them in this big big stack. But those are not real efficient for us. Um, it's very difficult to find the information that we're looking for on these little cards and going through them and everything. It's easy, much easier for us to be able to be out in the field with my phone and I can say, okay, here's the, here's the, uh, here's the RV that we're looking at. It's got this license number. I type that in, your name pops up with your phone number, boom, I'm calling you and we can get you coming back to your RV. Same thing as, you know, if we need to find you at your RV, I can type in your name. Oh, here you are. You're located in lot, uh, K space, you know, 22. I go out there, I find you. Um, it's very easy for me to be able to do that and for us folks, you know, who have, have the ability to pull that out. Not, not everybody has that. You know, myself, our security people will have that. Our people at the info desk will have that information. So um, please do, please, please, please use the locator link. It's something new that we did in Perry. I know people aren't used to it, but it's really helpful on our end if we can get that information. Um, I had a situation in Perry. It wasn't pleasant. Uh, we had somebody um, at night get injured. I had to find their husband who was back at the RV. Um, it really was very difficult because they did not do this. If they had done this, it would have taken me one minute when I was with that lady to be able to get in touch with her husband. Um, so, uh, you know, I, I really, really, really highly recommend that you do this. Um, we have uh, someone who's first timer, but they're also a delegate. For the sure. planning board, and they want to know uh, they're new, uh, a new chapter. <clears throat> and can you tell me a little bit about the meetings um, you'll need to attend and um, when they are? Okay, we'll be asking our, our governing board members who are national directors, alternates, and then um, any others who are temporary delegates to show up by the 5th of, um, of July. Okay, that afternoon there's going to be area caucuses. What area caucus is, is all the national directors, temporary delegates, whoever as part of the governing board for that week, are gonna to get together and talk about the things that are gonna come up during the governing board meeting. Um, the next day we have a national director's briefing, I believe at nine o'clock and at 10 o'clock we have a workshop where um, all the delegates will get together um, and they will go over a lot of the stuff that's going on during, uh, that's gonna happen the next day. A lot of discussion going on, there's no rules or limits to what can be talked about during that workshop. It's not like a real meeting where you have a certain amount of time, you got to be in order, all that kind of stuff. This workshop allows a more free discussion of everything that's going on, going to be talked about the next day. After that, 
in the afternoon, one o'clock, we had the candidates forum, where all the candidates who are running for national office will have an opportunity to tell you why you should elect them, try to convince you, you know, this is what makes me the best possible candidate for this office. After, that afternoon, um, we'll also do the orientation, first time was orientation after that, chapter fair after that. The next day, starting at seven o'clock, is check-in for the governing board meeting. That will be held at Heritage, uh, Heritage Center in the theater. You'll come in uh, the door, they'll check you in. Um, there'll be some refreshments there for you. Then the meeting will start at nine o'clock. So that's kind of a quick synopsis. You will receive from uh, Penny and our chapter service department, um, a booklet and a packet of all kinds of information that'll be coming to you probably within the next couple weeks. Um, so keep an eye out for that. Has all the information that you're gonna need to get there to um, get yourself ready for the meeting. How's that? That that was really good. I'm tired. I know you wore out. So I'll answer this next question. Is the entertainment held outdoors? We would love that, but the weather up there is so unpredictable. It will all be indoors this time. Um, just for our, it just takes a lot of the safety whole works. Yeah, so our our, our daytime entertainment. We will have a tent where our daytime entertainment is held out in this plaza area. But our evening entertainment we're doing indoors. Um, a couple of years ago, in 2013, they planned for it to be outside. Um, I think they got one night of outside entertainment in. The other night it poured rain and hailed and, and they had to move it inside. So we're not even fooling with that. Um, I have you know, no interest in having to re rearrange everything like that. So we're just gonna schedule it all inside and, and go with it like that. I wish we could do it outside, I really do. And when we go back to Tucson uh, next spring, we will do it outside because the chance of rain in Tucson is much less than the chance of rain in Gillette. Uh, I certainly hope we have uh, four, four or five dry days in a row when we're there. Um, as we did in Perry, Perry was perfect weather, unbelievably perfect weather. I hope we get the same for Gillette, um, but I cannot, I cannot um, put that to chance. I know it's too bad though. Yep, it is really too bad. Um, the app download availability will be announced uh, by email, website, or how? Uh, yeah, we will have we'll have information that we will send out to everyone. Um, it'll be an e-blast with the instructions on how to do it, how to go about doing it. If you've already uh, downloaded the app, basically what you're going to do is you're just going to go back in and select the new the new convention. Um, if you haven't, what you'll have to do is go into um, Go into the App Store, um, iTunes. What is it? iTunes. What do they call that? The App Store. The App Store. What's 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 Google? Google Play. Google Play. All right. You'll go into one of those, whatever your phone deals with. Um, you'll download the app, and then you'll go through the process of uh, hooking up to the FMCA uh, convention. Um, it's really very easy. I will tell you, if you are having trouble, do not get discouraged. Come to the info center, and we'll get you worked out. Find me. I'll help you get it worked out. Um, you know, come to the office. We can, you know, we'll be happy to help you get on that app if you're having trouble with it. Now, I do have to warn you, if you have an older phone, if you have a flip phone, if you don't have a smartphone, it will not work on those, unfortunately. So um, we've run into a, a couple of situations where folks have had older phones and it just won't, it won't work. And we apologize for that, but that's just kind of the technology issues that, you know, folks have to deal with um, with some of this stuff. We do text out information though. We push we push through text. So your flip phone will work for that. You just won't get some of the changes. You won't see the changes um, that of some of the seminars or things that happen. We put out a change, a written change sheet. When you arrive, it'll be with your book. And then also uh, in the morning um, newsletter at coffee hour, there'll be changes in there also right. for you. But that that's about the best we can do other than the app pushing out directly. And just so you know, if, if for some reason, you know, you, you miss coffee hour, you don't come over or whatever, we do have the newsletter typically around at many of the seminar rooms. It's at the info center. It'll be at the office. So if you want to pick up a newsletter, say you didn't get one in the morning, you can get one from other areas. We print extra ones and we have them in these different areas. So you can grab one if, you know, you don't get one at coffee hour in the morning. We also... Um, Michael, didn't we videotape how to do the app, all the different phases? So we'll have that information up and looping for you to see, you know, just what buttons to push, what to do. And then we also are going to tell you how to get the app off of your phone when it's over. So 
Um, Why would you want to take the app off? I, I don't know. <laughs> it just they might have a moment where they run out of freaking storage, like my phone. <laughs> um, uh, da -da -da. Will there be a fenced area for dogs? We will have a, a small dog park. It will be to the east of um, the plaza area, um, right across from the morning side um, grandstand. Um, we will fence off a, a, a piece of grass just where you can have your dogs, let them run around a little bit. It's not going to be a, a, a huge uh, dog park, but it will, uh, you know, it will uh, satisfy your, your ability to let your dog run around a little bit. There's not. There's actually quite a bit of grass in the area. So if your dog's well behaved, you know, you can certainly take them somewhere else and it's not going to run away. Um, we will have some grass areas where they can run around if you want to throw the ball for them, that kind of thing, really, you know, stretch their legs out. Um, but, you know, we will have a, a fenced in dog park as well with, uh, with uh, little bags to clean up after them. And speaking of the little bags, please try to be kind and don't take them all because we will only bring so many with us and we don't want to run out. But we did have a little problem in Perry. Um, try to try to keep that area clean because it is small and uh, just do your best to take care of you. the next person coming behind you would appreciate it also. Um, outstanding. Thank you. Oh. That was for me. Oh, okay. I didn't see it say, did it say Barb on there? I think so. Oh, it says Barb. Oh, yeah. Will you have square dance? Carolyn, we do not have square dance. And that's something that I'm, I'm I, we had in Perry a few years ago. And, I, you know, I like to get it back. I just don't have anybody to do it. If you know somebody who does it, if you do it, call let me you. know. And uh, I'll be happy to add a square dance to, um, to, our, to our activities. Um, it's a fun thing to do. Um, I think I could find some room to do it. So, you know, if, if, if there's someone who, who you know or if you do it, I'll be happy to add it to our, our list of things that we have going on. All right. I think, how do we do? How are we doing with time? Good. All right. If there's any more questions, go ahead and, uh, go ahead and send them in now. If not, we're going to probably wrap things up. Um, it was a good, you know, a lot of good questions today. Hopefully, you know, we were very helpful to those who were, who were on with us. Um, we are going to do another one of these on June 16th, as Michael has up on the, on the screen there. And for folks who don't know, um, Michael Stanger, he helps us put these dang things together. He's waving there. He's kind of our uh, our producer. We have Ann, um, marketing director. She's sitting in on this, making sure we're not saying anything stupid. Um, so, you know, appreciate their help when we put these things together. Um, we obviously couldn't do this on our own. Well. <laughs> um, so, you know, we have yeah. a good time. We have a good time doing it. And I, I hope, I hope, you know, we give some good information, but also have a good time, uh, uh, you know, letting you folks know that we're, we're, we do this for fun. I mean, this is, you know, we do it. There's a lot of work involved, but we enjoy doing it. We hope you enjoy the events when you show up. Um, that's our job. If you don't have a good time, then we're not doing our job. So um, please let us know. We want to do it as best we can to make sure you have a great time when you come to these events. Um, it does cost you some money, and you know we want to make sure that it's money well spent on your behalf. Um, if, if you have suggestions, uh, please let us know. We we you know if you have ideas that can make it better. You know, some of the dumbest ideas that I've come up with, we actually do. <laughs> you know, so, you know, you know, there is no such thing as a dumb idea. And sometimes those ideas might not seem like they're going to work. But if you tweak them a little bit and massage them the right way, they turn into a great, uh, a great event. So, um, so um, our birthday boy says that we did a great job. He, he feels well informed, older, but well informed. <laughs> We all age a little bit on these things. <laughs> yeah, we do. But it's all good. It's all good. And, uh, you know, hopefully um, we can have some fun while we're there. And um, Mike, uh, I'd like to meet you when, when, we're, when we're on site. And you come look me up at the office. I'm, if I'm out there running around somewhere, you'll see me. I probably won't be wearing this hat, but um, maybe I will. I don't know. May I have that hat on from last time? One. Yeah, I could see the big one. The big one. Um, 
somebody had asked earlier, Mike, if this would be on YouTube, but yes, okay. I don't know if I answered that question. Um, yeah, we'll be on YouTube. Yeah, well, yeah, once we once we once we are done with this, uh, Michael and his wizardry gets it out there so you can look at it again, which I'm sure you will want to. Um, who wouldn't want to watch this a second time? I know. <laughs> um, so, but but for those who you know, maybe maybe a friend couldn't make it and they're asking about it, you can direct them to that, and they can they can uh, get the information as well. Um, or if maybe you had to take off and didn't get you got there late or had to take off, you can check it out and uh, um, go review it again. So, um, there's no other questions. You got um, more questions? Well, oh. this says the full timers, military veterans, and elk chapters are having a pre rally starting the 27th. If you register for that, can you stay through? to the into convention i don't know about that. let me read this here thing but what what bob asked is they're having there's a tri chapter um, uh, rally prior to fmca starting on the third we we take possession of the grounds on the 30th of june and their rally goes until the 30th. So I think what Bob's asking is, his, can his folks stick around? And the answer is yes. Um, for those who are in those three chapters, it's uh, who is it? The, the it's Elks? Elks. No, it's the uh, Elks, military. And, and full-timers. Yeah. What, full -timers. What, uh, what those folks, and I've talked to Bob about this, and I think he's relayed the information on to those who are participating in that event. Um, we may have, depending on, depending on where they're parked, we may have to ask them to move. We're hoping we don't have to. I mean, quite honestly, for our parking team, the, le the least amount of that that goes on, the better for them. But just depending on where they are parked, um, we may have to ask them to move. We may not. We'll just have to see how that works out um, when we arrive and what we have set up. And I'll talk to Ken Lewis, our parking chief, and see what needs to be done when we're there. So uh, we also have the Monaco. Uh, Monaco Rally is going to be in there early as well. They're doing a pre-rally on site. So um We'll be dealing with those folks as well to make sure everything is clear. And we don't want to, we really don't want to move anybody who's already parked if we, if we don't have to. So, let me just do one more sweep here at the end, and I think we can say happy trails. Happy trails. You gonna sing it? Happy trails to you until, until we meet again. again. Happy trails. <laughs>